Meet the hollow shadow clock, the desktop size clock you may think you already know, with its captivating, magically moving hands. However, this one has an additional trick. With the click of a button, you can project a larger than life clock face onto any surface, thanks to the high powered LED here built in at the front. Hi, I'm Lewis and this is DIY Machines, the channel where I show you step by step how to build awesome projects. Not only can you control the brightness and color of the clock using these two discrete buttons here at the back, the project has a built-in web server, which allows you to program a schedule of scenes based on the time of day and day of the week. You can set yourself up to something to wake you up in the morning, or perhaps set a more cozy atmosphere for those wintry evenings. In this video, we'll go over how to 3D print and assemble one of these hollow shadow clocks for yourself or as a gift. I've based my project on the original hollow clock design by Shiura, who are kindly giving their permission for me to turn it into this. You'll find links to their original design down below this video. Parts of this project have been sponsored by PCBWay, and I'll tell you some more about their services later on. Now, to make one of these for yourself, you're gonna need just a few parts. You'll need a high power LED, stepper motor and driver, capacitor and buttons, a slide switch and female power lead, microcontroller, a few magnets, some nuts and bolts and screws, a five volt power supply, and some filament for your 3D printer. I've also created this custom PCB to help make connecting all of the electronics together in just the right place super easy. I highly recommend it. But if you prefer, I've also created this wiring diagram, if that's more your style. To help you find all of the required parts, I've created this small kit, which is available from my internationally shipping Etsy store. And every purchase of one of these helps to go and fund my next project. So if you do, thank you. Right, let's get started with the 3D printing. Now all of the 3D printing files are linked to for free down below this video. For my parts, I've used different color combinations of 3D Jake's PETG filament. Now, if you won't be putting your completed project in direct sunlight or near a radiator, you should be just fine using PLA if you would prefer. Now let's assemble the clock face. The magical hour hand is in fact held in position by three magnets. We need to organize their north and south poles to make best use of the magnetic field which they generate. Now to help ensure you orientate them correctly, mark one of them with a permanent pen. Then place your next magnet on top of this and make a mark again and repeat for the third magnet. Now they just need to be inserted into the parts as shown. Use some hot melt glue added to the top and then carefully smooth flat into the recesses. This should result in the dotted faces of the magnets facing in these directions. Our hour hand is attached to the rotor with your 12 millimeter long M2 screw. This should be tightened and then loosened ever so slightly again so that the hand can rotate freely without too much wobble. This is then placed inside of the front face followed by the hour rotor with its magnets facing you, and finally the rear cover. To hold this sub-assembly together, use an M2 by six screw at the top. If later you find you need it, you can optionally add two more here at the base. You can easily test your configuration of magnets by manually turning the hour hand rotor, which will turn the hour hand. <laughs> if yours is working fine, we can set this aside 
and turn our attention to some of the electronics. Our LED board has wires pre-attached to both the incoming and outgoing sides. You'll need to cut off the wires on the outgoing side and save this as we'll need to use these again shortly. The remaining wires can then be threaded through the hole of your base print and then the board for the LED is bolted in place using two of your M3 by 8 bolts. We need to insert three nuts into these three locations. They are simply pushed fit into place. And once installed, we can use them to attach our 3D printed light cone with the remaining three of our bolts. First, screw them all the way through the light cone. Then, screw this onto your base. Don't fully tighten these screws just yet. For now, just bring the two 3D prints level with one another. We'll be using these three screws later on to adjust the angle of our light cone so that we can have a nice, clean and crisp projection. Assembling the brains of our shadow clock is next and thankfully the PCB makes it super easy to get all those electronic components connected up together. However, if you'd prefer to, I have made a wiring diagram so you can see how you can wire it up using wires if you'd rather go down that route. For the motor driver board, look for the semicircle notch on the housing and match this up with the drawing on our PCB. Pop the legs through and then solder on from the other side. The capacitor goes through the holes at the top. Our two push buttons are soldered onto the other side of our PCB. The slide switch is then added to the top edge along here. Now, before we solder our microcontroller onto the PCB, we need to upload the code for our project. Connect your board to your computer via USB and then open up the Arduino IDE. Now, if you would like to use the web interface later to schedule scenes for your projected clock image, then you'll need to update these lines with your Wi-Fi username and password. Then set your board type and your USB serial port before going ahead and pressing upload. By default, if no network has been entered or can be connected to, the clock's going to carry on and start working its mechanical side automatically anyway. First, it will try and connect to the Wi-Fi 10 times before it defaults to this mode. In this mode, don't worry, you can still control the LEDs using the two buttons at the rear of the clock. Now, if you did enter some Wi-Fi credentials, take note of the IP address shown to you in the serial monitor after the clock has finished uploading and successfully connected to Wi-Fi. We're going to need this IP address later to connect to the web interface. Towards the end of the video, I'll guide you through how to get the most out of this. With our microcontroller now programmed, we can go ahead and solder it onto the PCB. We can now take those LED wires which we cut off earlier, reduce the length from the plug to about six centimeters, and then solder this onto your PCB. In a similar fashion, shorten the length of the wires coming from your stepper motor to about five centimeters in length and then solder these on, paying attention to the labels on the PCB and the colors of the wires. Now we can fit your DC barrel to the print after you have shortened its wires to about five centimeters in length. Once installed, you can solder its wires onto your PCB, paying close attention to the marked polarity. The PCB is then fitted by sliding the right hand end of the PCB down the slot inside of your printed base. Align the two buttons with the holes and then you should be able to just swing it on into position. Thread the LED connector through the base 
and connect it to the wires coming from your LED. Finally, secure the PCB with an M3x8 bolt. Right before we go ahead and finish those cogs, I'd like to say a big thank you to my Patreons, sponsors and YouTube members, all of which make projects just like this one possible. That's this list of lovely people going past your screens now. It's thanks to these people that I am able to document, prototype and share these projects for free. If you can and would like to support future projects, I would be very grateful and you'll find some details down below. Now, let's go ahead and install some of those cogs. The mini drive gear is slipped around its printed axis and then both of these also go into the enclosure. The bevel gear comes in two different mounting sizes to help you fit it snugly on the end of your worm gear. You simply push fit it on and then push fit this onto the end of your motor shaft. These can then all be nestled into place inside of your enclosure. We can then take our clock face and preset the time manually by turning the minute and hour rotors by hand. Once you've got this set, you simply drop it down in place on top of the base. We can then also add the rear lid on top of the base and then connect everything to a 5 volt power supply. Oh, and I almost forgot to add the decorative overlay onto the minute hand. Hot melt glue will do the trick. And there you have it, your finished shadow clock, ready to wow people with its projections. To access the web interface for your clock, enter the IP address which you recorded earlier into a web browser of a device connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Once the page has loaded, you can configure the time zone to accurately reflect where you are in the world. To create a schedule, give it a name and then choose a start and finish time. You can then set the red, green and blue values of the LED and the overall brightness of the LED set. After this, choose the days of the week which you want this schedule to take effect and save it. Now all of your program schedules you'll find further down this page. Here you'll also be able to delete any of the older ones that you no longer need. Now if you've used the manual control buttons on the rear of your clock, you'll see a banner appear here on the top of the website, letting you know that the manual controls at the moment are overriding what you may have configured as a schedule. When your next scheduled event starts, this will retake control from your manual button presses, or it will also reset every night at midnight. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you might have learned one or two things. If you've enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, giving the video a thumbs up and sharing it with anyone else you know. Until the next video, do some good and ciao for now. So really quickly, before we finish off this video, I want to say thank you to PCBWay for their sponsorship in this video. I've used them to create the PCBs for many of my projects now for more than two years. They've consistently delivered in both quality and speed. If you've never made a PCB yourself, I highly recommend giving it a go via PCBWay. If you're a new customer of theirs, they have a special promotion where you can have your first five PCBs for $5. And they'll give you a $5 coupon. So effectively, you'll just need to pay for some shipping. Give it a go, you won't regret it. You test if this is working by turning the <coughs> onto this, as we'll need these wires again later on. Ow, that's sharp. <laughs>